I say, oh Bean, it's time for another video! Right, in this video, we are going to do some correlations between stocks. Ooh! Now, the reason you might want to do some correlations between stocks is because there are a various number of trading strategies and portfolio allocation strategies that rely on knowing what stocks are correlated and which ones are not correlated. For example, if you had two correlated stocks, highly correlated stocks, the typical example given is Coca-Cola and Pepsi, you might monitor those for prices and when one of them goes higher than the other one and the other one goes lower well the idea is that you short the higher one and you go long the lower one and then you have a nice little thing and you've reduced your risk Ooh, isn't that nice but anyway uh, so yes yeah, so that's one reason why you might want to correlate stocks so right now i have this extra cheeky little python file with 15 lines that i've already populated because what would be the point of typing all this stuff out um so what what's in here get stocks uh, method this get stocks method is simply reading from a tickers csv file that has some tickers in there which we can use to get the data about the stocks that's linked in the doobly-doo you can download that gratis free of charge whatever um you don't have to use that you could just simply define a cheeky little array of stock tickers that you like to use um, the rest of the stuff is, okay, import CSV, that's for this stuff over here. Import NumPy. NumPy is very, very useful. We're going to be using that to do some number of stuff. Uh, Pandas, that's useful for creating data frames uh, and things like that. Uh, Matplot, we're going to be creating some plots uh, and we're going to be displaying them, graphs and things like that. Seaborn, we're going to be using the heat map function in that to create a heat map graph. We'll be using uh, PyPlot to actually display it. Pandas data reader, and this is where we're going to get our data from, uh, date time to date time, that is going to be when we're going to define a date for today from. Uh, so yes, that will be all gravy. Oh my god, let's go. Right, here we go. So, we've got the get stock stuff, let's think about what we need to do. So let's do a quick little entry method, and I probably should have typed this out first, but I didn't think to do this. Oh well, we're doing it now. Okay. If dunder name equals dunder main, then we want to do some stuff. Well, what do we want to do? Well, we want to have a uh, get some data, um, and we want to correlate the data. So we'll, we'll have a method called correlate, okay? And that's going to take some data, uh, which we need to get from somewhere. Uh, so let's just create the correlate method first. Shall we create the correlate method first? Hmm. Let's not. Let's create the let's get data data stuff first. Okay. So we're going to get some data. That is going to be def get data because I'm well creative we'll pass in the tickers and what we'll do is we'll say stocks what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over every single one of the tickers that we pass this method and then we are going to uh, get the data I realize I have to slow down talking because I'm talking really really fast um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to iterate over all of these tickers we're going to get the data for every single one of the tickers put it into a data frame and then we're going to put the data frames into this stocks array, and then what we're going to do is we're going to merge all of that into one data frame. Ooh. Okay, right, we'll do that. So, uh, whoa, what happened there? I don't even know what happened there. That was weird. For ticker in tickers, it's going to iterate over all this. I want to do a try except block because I'm lazy and can't be bothered to actually handle errors. Oh, well. Uh, we'll create a data frame called stock data we will do data dot data reader and then we'll pass in the ticker we need to pass in a data source in this case i'm going to be using yahoo uh we want to pass in a start date like whoop start date and we also want to pass in uh the end the end of everything right here we go that is going to get us all of our data uh and then what we want to do is we want to say stock start append and then we want to do do, 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 stock data. Oh, you know what? Actually, we need to do something else. The other thing we need to do, so what this, this data frame comes back with, it comes back with six columns in it and one index. So it comes back with, um, do, 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 do. It comes back with the price, the close, the open, the adjusted close, some other stuff that we're not interested in, and the date, the date is the index. So basically... The date is the thing that it's uh, indexed against. I don't know how I can really explain that without saying index again. Um, but what we want to do is we want to basically, because we're putting it in this array of uh, data frames and then we're going to merge them, we want to have them all linked by their tickers. So we need to add another column 
called ticker, the end of the ticker or something like that. So we can do that. Uh, probably easiest way to do that is just to add a new method and we can say uh, add column. Uh, we'll pass in the data frame. We'll pass in the name of the column if we want to reuse this later. Um, and we will do stock data and then we can do the square brackets with the name pass the value that we're going to switch in there and then just return that data frame. So now we can switch this up to actually do add column stock data. We want to add the one ticker. Notice that this is lowercase t. You could put uppercase t, but you've got to remember to do uppercase t the rest of the time. So just be aware of that. Uh, and then we want to actually pass in the ticker and we want to add another bracket there before I forget. Okay, next thing to do is to do the accept. We're not actually going to bother with anything particularly interesting here because, like I say, I can't be bothered actually handling the error. Uh, ticker, I suspect that I might get some of these. There might be some problem getting data or something like that. We don't really care um, for the purposes of this. So, uh, mainly because everyone's going to be doing different data, so, you know, it's not like we can easily handle everything. What we then want to do is we want, then want to return PD... Uh, the method we want to use is concat that is going to concatenate our thing and that is going to be stock so remember this is going to be the array a list that's going to have all of our data frames in for each of those tickers those tickers get the uh, a new column added that says the ticker so for example if it's apple stock it'll be APPL that'll be a new column that's in there and then what we're going to do is we can concatenate these and they all have the column so we can actually use them later to actually reference by the ticker. This will all make sense later on I promise. Um, the next thing we should probably do is actually reference that here in this correlate method. We haven't called correlate yet but we're going to pass the data to correlate so we're going to say uh, correlate. We'll pass in data frame so uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to reset the index so we can do df reset index now i mentioned that the index of this data frame is going to be uh the date we really don't care about that we are going to then do some other stuff because we only, we only care about really the date column although we don't want it to be an index so we can actually manipulate the data frame we care about the adjusted close. You might care about the open or the close or maybe some other data point. I care about the adjusted close and we also want to care about the ticker. So uh, we are going to do a data frame again and we're going to use those columns that we want. So I want date, I want adjusted close. Note the uh, uppercase letters here and the space. The space is important and then the lowercase ticker. Um, the next thing we need to do is create what's known as a pivot table. Now. A pivot table, uh, if you think about like a data frame, at the moment it's going to have these as columns, right? It's going to have date, da, da, da. What we also want to have is we basically want to have them on the uh, that axis. What's that axis called? X is across. So Y is not across. We want to basically have them referenced on the Y axis as well. And that's what we're going to use a, a pivot for. So we can just do, um, do, 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 do pivot. Uh, then there is a lovely little method that is called pivot who knew um, and then we need to pass in those things that we, we care about again so you could pivot on other stuff but we care about these I want to do uh, adjusted close again and then I also want to want that cheeky little ticker call reset index on that again I think that adds a new index which it shouldn't do uh, it might I might be wrong about that maybe it doesn't uh, then we want to do return the pivot and oh we also want to correlate it that's probably an important thing given that this method is called correlate um, the method that we need is called core. yes it's called core I'm gonna guess that I might be wrong uh, and then we want to use uh, well there are a number of different methods we can use but I think Pearson is the one to go for there we go um, so we've correlated that now. Obviously, we need to pass in the data. So where are we going to get the data from? We need to say uh, get data, get stocks, i.e. get our tickers, like that. And uh, I actually don't want to get all of them. I want to only get, like, say, 10. 10 is a good number. 
it's, it's one after nine in case anyone you know is interested in maths uh, that's quite good also one it's one um it's one before 11 as well so yeah which rhymed with seven which is another number again in case you're interested uh, the next thing we need to do of course is to actually plot the data so to I'm going to create a little method called plot. It's going to take the data. And what we're going to do is we are going to say, Seaborn, I want a heat map. Heat map, and then we pass in the data. You can pass in uh, some colors if you like. And now have a goosey goosey gander on the Seaborn website. And you will see that there are many different ones you can choose. I've picked blue. Then we're going to have like a vertical bar because we've got these. It's a correlation. So basically, we want to say, you know, how much is it correlated? Well, we're going to have everything from, if you know your correlations, one all the way to negative one. So that'll be um, V max, I think it is. V max 1.0. And then the V men will be negative 1.0. Um, I think that's all grady for now. Um, and if we do a plt dot show. Hopefully, uh, I haven't made any egregious errors as usual. Uh, oh, I'll tell you, I have made an egregious error already. We need to do plot data. Okay, I nearly did make an egregious error. Maybe there are others lurking. Um, let's 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 do it. Let's run it. Let's see if it works. Ooh, ooh, ooh! We're waiting with bated breath now. Oh God, it does. Something has gone calamitously wrong. No objects to concatenate. What do you mean there are no objects to concatenate? That seems absolutely ridiculous. Uh, let's have a gander at what I've done wrong because something's gone hilariously wrong here. Um, there's no object to concatenate. Find a data reader. Hmm. <laughs> this is interesting. Okay, it can't concatenate. Do I have the internet? Because that would seem like a, an important thing. I do have the internet. Mm hmm. So, this has gone terribly wrong. We have to figure out what has gone wrong. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Correlate. Yeah, so it's not there, so it's here. It's not getting the data. Why is it not getting the data? We'll print the stock data just as a little thing. See what's happening here. What's happening? Ah! Hmm. It's not getting any data. Well, we knew that because the, the bloody accept was going. You know what will be useful if I just got rid of this uh, try here, got rid of this accept. We'll knacker that off a second. Uh, and then we can do a do do do. Bring it back. See what happens. What What's it going to moan about? Uh, start date is not defined. Oh, yeah! Ah, yes, I am an absolute moron, aren't I? I'm referencing things we haven't written. Why did I, why did I write that? Oh, oh, what an idiot. Right, start date. Uh, what do I normally do for these videos? Uh, it'll be something like... Uh, do, 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 2019... No, 2005. 20, yep, yeah, 0101, which is the 1st of January 2005. 2005, I'm not going to say 2005, because that would be a waste of breath. Uh, and then we also want to use that date time module and say date time dot now. Okay, right. Hopefully, it's going to work this time. Running it, it's running it, it's running it, it's going. Da 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 da. da. Oh, it hasn't errored yet. Maybe it's just taking the time to get some data. Oh, it's got an error for ACA. Doesn't matter. I need to be an error somewhere. But it looks like it's doing it well. Uh, where is the actual thing? Is it? Ah, oh! it's there, but it's not there. Okay, we've got more errors. I wonder what's gone wrong here. Hmm. So it's, it's, it's got a thing. That's our vertical bar from 1 to negative 1. I wonder what has, has gone wrong here. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I probably should have read the error message it just gave me, but, you know, YOLO. Hmm. Correlate. We're going to return that. Uh-ha. This is weird. Why is it moaning about that? Okay, after a brief pause, I've realised I've done something wrong. But it turns out, um, this is a really weird error. I don't actually know why it's moaning about this. But this thing here uh, is in the wrong order. I don't know why, because we've got it in this order over here. So it's moaning about something stupid. So we need to swap adjusted close uh, with a ticker. And we need to swap that over there, like that. And if we run it, 
ooh, it's going to work now, hopefully. Ooh, it's doing some stuff. It's moaning about something that's nothing to do with this. And here we go, come on. Do, 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 do. Oy, it's working, right. So, this looks okay. Um, so, we can see we've got an extra cheeky correlation that's popped up. Like that. Um, and you can see the more highly correlated something is, the darker it is. So, the ones that are the same stocks, as you can see down the diagonal, they're all 100% correlated, as you would expect. Uh, and you can see ones that have low correlation, and so on and so forth. And you can see all the tickers down here, and you can see the tickers over here as well. We've got a little label there that says ticker. Um, what we can do as well, because you might notice something about this, is that, well, it's also it's all mirrored because of how this table works. So the fact that you've got, you know, a 3 in here, and you've got 888 eight, eight here, and you've got the same ones. So it's mirrored. So 8883N is there, and 8883N is there. We can actually add what's known as a mask onto this. So if we were to go back to the code, we can then um, create a mask. And the way we can create a mask is we first need to create a, uh, a data frame um, that is just going to be empty or something like that. So one way of doing this is we can, um, we can do this. We can say... We'll call it mask, we'll say MP zeros, because zeros is, is basically um, just zeros, a data frame of zeros. Although I think you have to say, we can say like, and then you pass in a data frame, so we pass in our data. Like that. And what that's going to do is it's going to basically create an a, a MP zeros, a, a NumPy data frame that is just filled with zeros, but it has the exact same shape as our data. And then we can... Um, basically turn it into a triangle, an upside down triangle, and there is a method for this, and we can do mask, uh, mask, mp, and it's try u, indices from, passing the mask itself, like that, make it true, and that'll be the upside down triangle, that's going to be over the top of all of our, the correlations with the, the stocks itself. Um, we just have to add, this as an option here, if you add the option mask here, that will work. Uh, another thing we can also do is we can add a title, we can say plt.title, and we can say, uh, the, ah, correlation between stocks. There we go. Run that again. It's going to take a bit of time to run, but here we go. It's going to work. Oh, I don't know what sound I'm making. Here we go. There we go. Oh, look at that. So now you can see it's a bit more clear. And it's actually taken out the single correlations as well, which I didn't realize it was going to do. But uh, yeah, so now we can see the actual correlation between the stocks we're interested in. Obviously, if we don't care about the stocks themselves, that was a happy accident. I didn't realize that method would do that. But there we go. All cool. We've got the correlation between stocks title. That is all the stocks correlated. Wowzers Trousers, Arrivederci, Toodle Pip!